Jessica here with Joyful and Simple Designs today. We are going to be making these cornhole boards. This is a super fun summer game. So let's get started. The first step for these cornhole boards is we need to cut down our plywood. Okay, there's a couple things I'm going to do to prep to cut this down. So this each each cornhole board needs to be two feet by four feet. So a sheet of plywood is already four feet wide. So I'm gonna cut this down to two feet. And so between the guard and the blade, I have one inch. So I'm gonna make a mark at 25 inches. Because when I'm cutting, I'm gonna lose an inch. So that will put me at 24 inches. So I'm gonna make a mark at 25 inches on each side and I'm going to use this level and I'm going to clamp it down because this is going to be my guide for my cut so I'm going to clamp it right on my line on both ends Make sure my clamp is on the other side where I'm cutting so it does not get in my way. And I do not want my board to fall off and pinch my blade so I'm going to make sure I have this scooched over enough that my 2x4s that are underneath it are going to support it for the cut. I also don't want to hit the 2x4s that I have under here. So just double check that they're out of your way of your saw. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your depth is low enough for your wood and we are ready to cut. board number one. For the frame of our cornhole boards, I'm going to be using two by fours. And as long as your cornhole, cornhole board is exactly 24 inches by 48 inches, then we can use 48 inches for our long piece. So I'm going to cut four boards at 48 inches because we have two sets. For our shorter portion of the frame, as long as your board, your main cornhole board is 24 inches wide, then your frame board can be 21 inches long. But if you're under at all, you're going to want to make sure that you take your measurement, subtract three, because each two by four is actually one and a half inches. So 24 inches minus three inches is 21 inches. So that's what I'm gonna be using on my shorter two by four. So just double check your measurement and then subtract three from that. Okay, I'm gonna give my two by fours just a quick sand just to make sure they are all smooth after we cut every piece. And then we will pull the Pack a little jig out and start assembling our boards. We do need to drill a hole in our cornwall board, but I'll come back to that later. First, I'm going to just double check that my frame is going to fit on the cornwall board. So I'm just going to lay these out. And if I have to trim anything down, I will do that before I put the frame together. Okay, so I've double checked that my 2x4s are good to go. I have just a slight lift around the entire edge. 
and that way my 2x4s don't hang over at all because we don't want to see them from the top. And I'm going to assemble them first together and then I'll attach them to the board. So I am going to use a jigsaw. I am going to use a pocket hole jig to do this. So I'm going to um, work on my table. I'm going to be using my pocket hole jig and you're going to want to double check that yours is set up for two by fours. So if you don't know how to do this, you can look online at their directions or I've also posted a previous video on the membership about how to use the jig. So I'm going to adjust mine for an inch and a half. Okay, I'm going to start with the shorter 2x4 and I'm going to make some marks just so you can see where I'm going to put my pocket holes. So I'm just going to kind of evenly space them out. I'm not concerned about it being perfect and I'm going to do two on the ends and then three in the middle. So when you're putting it in your pocket hole, just make sure that your drilling holes all in the same side. Um, also remember to use the bit that comes with the pocket hole jig. That's really important. Okay, so I'm gonna have all my marks facing towards where I'm gonna drill. Next, I'm gonna do our longer boards and I'll probably do about seven holes just scattered throughout. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not too concerned about perfect spacing, but I do want the spacing to be mostly even. I'm just gonna come in and make my pocket holes. And then you'll want to do that for your other board as well. Next, we are going to drill our holes. So you need to use a six inch hole saw. And when we're measuring, our the center of our hole is going to be nine inches down from the top. And so I'll post these measurements for you guys. And 12 inches in. So the center of your hole saw is going to go on your dot. I am using a different saw today just because the bit part is so big. And a couple tips for drilling, because this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. Um, your saw is gonna have a tendency to kind of skip so you're gonna really want to apply pressure so it doesn't move on your board at all because then you'll have dents on your board, which is quite the bummer after you've done so much work. And depending on the drill that you use, this can get kind of dangerous because some drills have a lot of power and this is gonna wanna yank your wrist. So how you hold your drill is gonna be really important and some drills have like separate attachments to give you some extra strength and stability but my wonderful husband is letting me use his big fancy drill today and this one just has lower um is going to be a lower speed but still high power so then hopefully i'm not going to have 
any issues with it yanking and um, yeah so let's drill our hole okay I am gonna drill a pilot hole just to make it easier to find where to place this You will need to take a sander to, a sander to this because of the tear out. So just keep that in mind before you get too far. Now we before we put the frame on the cornhole board, we are going to give it a good sanding. We want all the edges nice and clean and we don't want any of the tear out to show. So go around and sand. So to put our frame on the cornhole boards, I'm going to be using some wood glue and make sure you get outdoor wood glue. I have screws, so these are Craig screws for the pocket holes and I have a square uh, driver bit and I'm using a drill. So I like to line out my 2 by 4s to where they're going to be placed. And make sure your 2x4s are going the right way. Your holes are going to be at the top because that's where your screws are going to go in. And I'm just going to double check again that everything lines up really nicely. I'd rather double check now than after when I have stuff screwed together. I am going to screw the frame together first. So our shorter boards are going to have these end holes so they're going to come down and I'll get a closer look for you. Okay so we're going to put two screws in here. We want to make sure that our 2 by 4s are square and that everything is flush and lines up really nice and then we're just going to sink these screws in and I'm gonna do the same for this side and I'm using two and a half inch screws for the at least going into the two by four I'm gonna flip this over onto our other two by four Same thing. I am going to add glue onto the frame, onto the bottom where it's going to sit onto our board. So, um, you're going to want to use a good glue, something that is rated for outdoor use, and mine's a little clogged. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to flip this one back over again. This is the side that is going to be touching the board. So, I'm just going to add some glue. I want this to last. If you're going to be selling these, you're going to want them to last too so you have happy customers. So we'll flip this back over, put our glue side down. And then now is when you're really going to want everything to line up. You're going to want the same amount of gap on all ends. And I am using two inch screws 
for going into our board just because I don't want them to come out through the top. And I'm just going to do my four corners first so everything is nice and square. And then I'm just going to finish off by putting screws in all the other holes. Now to cut our legs out, we are going to use a two by four and we're going to measure out 11 inches. Cut out 11. On one of our edges, we're going to cut at an angle of 31.6 degrees, and that should be a stopping point on your saw. And so we still want our long end to be 11 inches. And so this angle is going to give us room for our legs to pivot down and still be flat on the ground. So this is what your leg should look like. An angle of 31.6 degrees and 11 inches from long end to long end. So just to show you what this looks like in action, on this end we have our 31.6 degree angle, that way there's room for it to pivot. And our bolt is being held together with a wing nut. So that's what we're going to do on this side. So from the end of our 2x4 I'm going to mark 5 inches. And that's where the end of our leg is going to go. So make sure our steeper angle is going towards our top. And then I'm going to just clamp this on. That just makes it easier to drill our hole. I'm using a quarter inch bit. And for the spot that I'm going to drill, I'm going to come in at two inches and I'm going to come down at one and a half inches. So that is where a bolt is going to be. So just, just to be closer, okay, I'm marking down at one and a half inches and from the top of our leg, I'm coming in at two inches. So, that's why we always measure twice. So this is where I'm gonna drill my hole at, right here. Of my quarter inch drill bit. I'm gonna put my bolt in. It's a tight fit, so the hammer is just going to help me get it through. I'm going to put the wing nut on. So the your cornhole board should be completely made. Now comes the fun part. And I like to put designs on mine. People always like that. So I cut out a design on the Cricut. So that is what I'm gonna use here. 
And so a couple things that I do, so a couple things that I use for this process is I have my stencil that I'm gonna use. I have contact, like sticky uh, transfer tape that I use for the stencil. I have a stencil brush and a plate to put the paint. And then you're gonna want some good outdoor paint. And then after we're all done, we will stain it and then seal it. So I'm gonna keep this design today just simple, only one stencil. And there's been other designs that I've done where I've used multiple stencils and pieced them together just because the cornhole board is so big. So I've already weeded my stencil and it is ready to go. I'm going to put my contact tape on the stencil. So I'm just gonna line it up. my stencil I'm going to measure up from a couple of spots and depending what kind of design it is I will either measure up from the bottom of the blue or I'll measure to letters because I want everything to be spaced out really nicely so I am gonna come up five inches from the bottom and I'm gonna use a pencil just to mark where I want this to be That way I can go and erase it later on and so this is where I know where to place them. so this is going to show me where to place the bottom of my loose stencil so I'm going to flip this over and I want the backing off of my stencil so sometimes this can take a little bit depending on the quality of your transfer tape and the quality of your stencil I just like to lay this flat just to make sure I am getting all those details to stay on. I'm going to flip this over and this should move around pretty easily and I'm just going to find those marks and I'm going to place the blue right on my lines. I'm going to carefully make sure everything is on really nice. Because when I take off my transfer tape, I want it to come off without all of the stencil. So this might be time consuming if your design is pretty intricate. Like mine, I have a lot of little pieces. So I'm just gonna go slow. Another thing that I do when I have my stencil on is if there's not very much room from the end of the stencil to the board, I will add some tape just so I don't get paint on the part of the board that I want to leave wood. When we are stenciling, the key is to do really light layers. That way we don't have any bleeding. So I'm just double checking that everything is down really good. So I'm gonna take my stencil brush and I'm just gonna get just a really little amount on the brush. So it's so little that I will probably do three layers of paint. 
and I know it seems like it'll take longer but in the end you'll have a much nicer finish you shouldn't have any touch-ups or very little touch-ups that you'd have to do it's definitely worth to do more layers and lighter paint we can take all of this off Next, we are going to stain our board. So if you have any marks on your boards, make sure to sand it off before you stain. We're gonna stain and then I'm gonna wipe off any of the excess. Once your stain is completely dry, we are ready to seal it. And you just want to make sure any dust is off. I'm using an outdoor sealer. Um, I would just double check the directions. You'll probably need two to three coats. And um, the directions will say like how long you need to wait before coats and if there's anything else you need to do. So I'm going to seal this. And so we are almost done with this project after your first board is done you are ready to make your second board so i'm just walking you through one because it's going to be the exact same process for our second board so i'm just gonna put this coat of sealer on let it dry and then i'll probably put two or three coats on total Your cornhole board should be done and are ready to use.